and DM from uh, Sri Tirunal Institute of Medical Science and Technology, Trivandrum. And he done his PDF in stroke and interventional neurology from Jayagiri Hospital. Welcome, you, sir. Thank you. So this is our first case. The brief history this is a 62 year old male patient came with the right hemiplegia with upper limb grade zero, lower limb grade one on right side with aphasia. Last seen normal was six hours back and he was taken to the local hospital. From there, he was loaded with aspirin 300 mg, clopidogrel 300 mg, atorvastatin 80 mg. And the CT was taken from outside, is reported as no bleed and left parietal some hypodensity. Unfortunately, I don't have the film to show. And he was not thrombolized from outside and referred here for further management. And while reaching our hospital, he was six hours from the window period. So he was out of window period and not thrombolized. And this is the clinical video. was not able to move his right side, right lower limb, he is able to move grade one to two. So we took him for mechanical thrombectomy through the right femoral route. And with the coaxial technique, we took a diagnostic catheter picard and cerebase and why try to candidate the left carotid initially it gone to the left subclavian so we took a left subclavian shoot and here we can see the left vertebral artery and the this is a basilar artery and there is uh, the pcs can be seen very nicely and the lateral view we can see the this is a basilar artery this is a pca and and nearly we can see the peak and it is filling into the MCA brand. Uh, if you clearly uh, look, we can see a thrombus lying in the M1 segment of M1 segment of the MCA. So yes, we took a left carotid, common carotid shoot. Here we can clearly see the external carotid artery, which has branches in the cervical segment and internal carotid artery is not seen in this shoot, uh, this part. And uh, in later part of the angiography, uh, we can see streak of contrast flowing through the internal carotid artery and the distal part is not clearly visible. So this is the lateral shoot. Here we can see a tight stenosis in, in the internal carotid artery at the origin. Uh, just uh, uh, at the level of the bifurcation and small streak of contrast going upwards. So here we had a patient with severe carotid stenosis and an M1 occlusion, suggestive of a tandem lesion. What to do? Do an angi angioplasty alone or should we stand? Sir, any comments or anyone to volunteer? Uh, first question I would like to ask is, did you do a imaging in your hospital? Because no, the initial imaging was just a CT, which was done many yes, hours sir. prior to the stroke. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, it was done one hour before reaching here. One hour before reaching here, he was taken to the local hospital. There, he was done the CT imaging. So, uh, prior so, to... But his prior symptoms... to, uh, prior to uh, mechanical thrombectomy, we didn't took a imaging. Uh, actually, he had... Uh, fascia and uh, right-sided weakness and he may, didn't show any bleed so immediately we took for mechanical thrombectomy uh, deciding on mechanical thrombectomy after DSI. That was the plan. So you were uh, fairly confident it is a large vessel occlusion without any uh, uh, vascular imaging? Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> we took him for... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, can you take the first slide? Uh, yes, just, sir. Uh, that uh, details, details. Yeah. So it's the symptoms started uh, last seen normal six hours back, and six he was, hours back. 
he was taken to hospital one hour prior to coming to our hospital okay 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 the, then he, uh, there he was taken a ct and not thrombolysis because it is five hours so they loaded with a uh, double anti platelets and statin and sent to our hospital okay so and he has no uh, so no other scans were taken no only ct scan was taken at the day okay so uh, based on the ct at so least... already six hours so yeah so our consultant said yeah, better we take him for dsa and see what is there and yes, decide no, on only that uh, the that that is a good way to do uh, only okay, that sir. the uh, sometimes the guidelines we may be transgressing yes that sir is, yes sir that is okay, okay because if you feel that will benefit the patient you may have to do it so already six hours so oh. gone so, any okay. one hour for mri so we took okay. him directly okay. uh, yes. in this case it is very beneficial for the patient Yes, you can direct already great zero power almost. So, uh, can you now take the angiographic image? Yes, sir. Hmm. This was the first image that is yeah. the left, left uh, so subclavian you, uh, shoot. Uh, why, uh, you had taken the first shoot of the yes. vertebral? Actually, while trying to cannulate the left uh, carotid, it gone to vertebral. So, we okay, did, uh, okay. took a shoot there. That's so why that happened. So, this clearly demonstrates the clot. I think it is a bit of the clot is also in the ICA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Terminal ICA and the MCA. Yes, sir. And the MCA is actually filling. It is a not a fully occluding clot. Yes, sir. At least in this image. I don't know in the uh, AP image. Do you have? Uh, AP image. We can't see it clearly actually. Okay. okay. Uh, here but, you can see the MCA branch. Yeah, right. there is some flow through the clot. Flow is there. Yes, sir. So that means uh, that it will be a partially uh, filling. Uh, Partially, uh, the, it's not fully, it's a submaximal occlusion or the clot is nicely pervious. So all the more reason that you can easily take it out, even though there is, so mostly the collaterals are anti-grade also the collaterals is there. That most probably that is why this patient might have had a good outcome also. This okay. thing, because there is still perfusion in the MCA territories. Yes, sir. Even though it is, you do not have the video. Uh, how was yeah, the video, this... how was the lag in the perfusion how was the capillary capillarogram uh, or... actually i don't have the video okay. only okay, to the... oh, then uh, what is, is the a... question you had you were asking in the no uh, sir uh, only for discussion but really, yeah sir. discussion what uh, is the question uh, whether to do angioplasty first or do we stand should we stand and go up to take the clot yeah i i i i, I think it's says... the participants yes sir what they feel that's all any volunteers, please? Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. Jay Shankar. Uh, actually, in this patient, uh, probably the acute lesion will be the clot inside the distal ICA and uh, M1. So probably we have to uh, deal with that first. But in order to reach that, we have to cross the proximal lesion. So probably we, we may have to do an angioplasty at least. If the guide catheter is go not going through that, if the guide catheter can cross it, uh, you can uh, go ahead with the uh, okay. distal mechanical thrombectomy and uh, later uh, we can see what is happening after taking out the diagnostic catheter to the crossing issue. Any other opinions? Uh, good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Hilal. Uh, uh, once we see that uh, posterior circulation runs from the vertebral, uh, we could see that PCOM was filling uh, to the right MC. This MCA was filling partially through PCOM. And there were distally so collateral MCA was still getting collaterals. So we can go both ways. Uh, suppose if this guiding would cross the stenosis, then we will directly go to do thrombectomy of the distal, whatever clot is there in MCA. But MCA through PCOM is partially filling. And uh, because uh, we do not know how much is the infarcted territory. So uh, opening proximally, opening the opening the artery proximally uh, with a stent or with the uh, this plasty. It could be both could be done. So whether to go distally or whether to go proximally before pulling and uh, putting angioplasty, um, if guiding process mostly we should go first to remove the thrombus, whatever is there, then we can do either plasty or stenting. Anyone is has a 
and patient has already received aspirin and clopidogrel uh, it should not harm even in putting stent stent there so but i will be i will be comfortable sir only because i do not know how much territory is infected and whether there is some uh, hemorrhagic transformation i do not know because ct we do not know how much is the ct what is the time, what has happened to ct we, we only know there is an infarct and ct image does not show anything so, so uh, what anyone else has an opinion Okay, uh, what I thought about this case is when we did the most uncomfortable point for me is we do not know the core which we are dealing with. Okay, sir. So, uh, especially in these type of cases, in our scenario when uh, cost is also a factor uh, and uh, the cost of the procedure and the outcome is a factor for our uh, the, whoever is doing. To know the core and go forward, we are more confident. Uh, so, in this case, we do not know what is the core. If the core is small, we can do a lot of interventions easily. If the core is big, a lot of risks of giving all these antiplatelets and all the other big procedures which we are going to do subsequently in this case, the extending, etc. Second, uh, this uh, versus of anti-grade or retrograde approach. Anti-grade approach is when we do the carotid uh, intervention first, followed by the uh, distal intervention, the MCA or the distal carotid. Or the retrograde, we do the intracranial first, followed by the extracranial. So when uh, it it depends on when when I was a neurologist, I always wanted to do because when we do not know about all these uh, the technical problems of this, we I always wanted to do the uh, retrograde approach first. That is because physiologically that makes a lot of sense, uh, opening up the uh, middle cerebral artery intracranially. So that is what we first, but whenever we are doing uh, on the ground, when we are doing the procedure to do it uh, anti-gradely, it is very easy it's, for the interventionist okay. because you know that you have secured this. What happens mm -hmm. in procedures like this is it takes a lot of time. You navigate with microwire, uh, micro catheter, whatever you, and you navigate with difficulty, cross the sheet, somehow you do a plus your, and then sometimes after your first pass, the MCA does not open or whatever. And then you find out that this uh, sheath has gone down and then you have to do the same procedure again. So that is one of the uh, difficulties when we do with such a small, you know, so that you have to do all the procedure again. And second, you do not get a good roadmap to do, uh, you uh, to navigate all this. Okay. So uh, technically this looks like a very severe uh, stenosis and you will have to do something to... Uh, uh, open yes. it up a bit uh, so rather than uh, trying to put the sheet through it because it does not look like that it will pass even though it will pass with difficulty and then it will again come down or something so uh, uh, an angioplasty okay. would be beneficial because uh, sometimes putting a stent and you do not know the core uh, and sometimes you may not open the intracranial uh, vessel and you have given dual antiplatelets so okay. a lot of things are involved so doing a simple plasty because most of the times we find that the plasty is enough for you to navigate uh, through this. And then subsequently in the distal shoots and how the procedure goes, we decide on uh, stenting. So uh, I would do uh, uh, just a plasty at this point of time. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, so this is what I found in literature that has potential advantage for acute stent placement and that is including the treatment of causative embolic lesion and low risk for further stroke, improvement in cerebral perfusion with potential attenuation of the infarct progression and contribute to the spontaneous intracranial clot lysis. But what are the potential advantage of not stent? That is the angioplasty alone. There is a low risk for MRA, low risk for atrogenic artery to artery embolization, low risk for stent thrombosis and avoid delay in intracranial recanalization. And there is some risk with the uh, uh, bradycardy and hypotension when we are doing the stent deployments. Oh, so, was this procedure done under local or under? Uh, sir, under uh, mild sedation only, okay. conscious sedation. Okay. So we uh, tried to pass the guide. It is not go, uh, going. So we are we can only pass the micro micro wire only. So uh, we done how, did a you navigate the, how did you navigate the stenosis uh, through what through, 
with a O14 microwire. And inside that, uh, with a microcatheter. Uh, microcatheter is not going so easily. So we with a balloon, we over the so uh, oh, microwire. Okay. Uh, we... O14 and with the sheath. Also. Sheath only. Okay. Yeah. O14 yeah. and through through or O14 we take balloon. a balloon. Uh, this is a balloon, balloon, and then done a plastic. What so was the balloon What was the balloon size? Two point five. Two point okay. five inch. Okay. After that, we got a uh, little better uh, structure, but still it is a severely stenosed uh, st uh, st uh, internal carotid artery. And now we can see the distal uh, ICA and uh, M1 segment with the distal, some distal flow with a clot in situ. Mm -hmm. So here we can clearly see the clot. So, so after that, we try to, uh, with the nest shoot, the M1 got completely occluded. So uh, is this shoot after you have done a pass in the intracranial? Seg seg no, seg no, no, sir. Only after this plasty and then we took a shoot. Hmm. So mm -hmm. after that, it completely got occluded. So it, there is distal embolization of the clot. After Sorry, shoot. Yeah. After there is shoot. Distal, 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 distal embolization. Distal distal embolization of the clot after taking the shoot. Shoot. Yes, yes. So we tried to pass the guide, but it is not going. And there is severe uh, pass also getting into the internal carotid artery while passing. So how did you pass the uh, guide? We are not able to pass. It is uh, no, at no. the... Uh, no, uh, no. Actually, uh, what materials did you use actually? Uh, Cerbis the OS yeah, so, uh, You have to use uh, some material coaxially inside that uh, to... Uh, React is there. React is there. React mm -hmm. and both, then... both React and uh, Cerbis is not passing. Uh, we initially passed the microwire and microcatheter uh -huh. and but microcatheter and micro uh, microcatheter is not um, passing the M1 segment. It is reaching only up to the distal ICA, then it is uh, coming back. So okay. we can't take the microcatheter from, with the guide in the common carotid or the proximal part of the ICA. Uh, what were the new materials actually used in this? Uh, actually, Cerebis was the uh, uh, old only. The microcatheter and microwire were new. Yeah, okay. React and also we took the second React, which is new. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So he already received antiplatelet from outside and not thrombolase. So we decided to stent him. Hmm. So by placing the stent, how we can choose the stent from this? Sir? Is there any any guideline or something? Any suggestions, sir? Anyone can suggest for the stent. So uh, in this setting, you usually if there is a clot proximally, there was also you do not know what, how. You, so closed cell st uh, stent will be better, yes, and uh, because uh, there is no thrombo less thromboembolism from the valves, it uh, anchors the, uh, this clot very well. So you can use any well, closed cell stent; it is easy to deliver, and you, mostly we have closed cell stents available there uh, usually. Hello. 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 Yes, Hello? Dr. Mukesh from the bar. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, why you have not done the second angioplasty? Why you want to put the stent over you? Sir, after angioplasty also, it is not going up. It is really. No, this is you are done with the 2.5 ml balloon. Okay, um, sir. Four. Ah. You can use four balloon. Four also. So okay, okay. you increase the size. Okay. Okay, sir. So what exactly happened when you cross the with uh, 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 long seat? Okay. And if you okay. stay for five to ten minutes, again it's okay. actually act as a plastic. Okay. 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 So most of the time it is not required to place a stent. Okay. okay so sir. first balloon definitely should be smaller size. Okay. And uh, the second one you can use 3.5, 4, 4.5 balloon, which is all coronary stent are available in the kit. Okay. Okay. It's, and after opening a uh, distally MCA. Still, yes, your vessel is getting closed. Okay. Yes. 
then you should i think uh, doing all procedure okay yes. and then you should think about placing the stent okay sir. then uh, uh, suppose you place the stent over here and you are not able to negotiate okay it will be difficult number one number two uh, suppose you want to place a stent then the clothes is will be better so crossing from the closed cell is okay. easier than than the opal open stent so any material you want to go through the uh, stent then closed cell is better okay oh. your wire catheter or uh, uh, intermediate catheter they are not going to stuck in the stir of the cells or stir of the stent so i would uh, do first angioplasty second angioplasty we'll okay. go up open up that first and then we'll wait for uh, 10 20 minutes it, if it is remain open i don't want to place a stent because we don't know when that your uh, in fact going to be bleed so we'll able to give the antiplatelet for the that period of time or not so that this is my second choice placing a stent okay. in a uh, 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 totally close ica or in tandem laser hello sir <clears throat> yes most of the time okay. uh, patients tend to have a uh, worse outcome because a lot of these patients come with uh, tandem occlusions come very fast to the ed and they would have been thrombolyzed also so this yes, case sir. is like you are lucky in that Patient has, not, not patient has been already loaded patient has been already loaded for you by someone and some it is sense. prime otherwise a lot of scenarios actually patient come to us in these tandem cases with thrombolysis and we are uh, most of the time it is a patient develops a bleed if you stent so stent is like the last option most of the time okay sir after play, after the um, plasty patient had developed a m1 occlusion that's why our consultant not want to again doing plasty and try again so and the second 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 thing yes, whenever you are doing the check and you in between the procedure okay sir don't do with a complete force okay yes try to see just vessels because when you are injecting with a full force actually actually you are uh, throwing the uh, uh, clot to the distal distal okay okay, okay. in a yes. stenotic artery when the catheter is down okay nearly occluded your vessels actually at the ica so there is just no flow so embolus yes, by itself is not going to go up if you are not taking repeated ngo so try to do less ngo shoots during the procedure okay so can i continue sir yes okay so we decided to stand the patient and we stand it with a closed cell design exact carotid stent and uh, up and and the thrombotic regime following the stenting usually in thrombolyzed patient this advice aspirin only and in not thrombolyzed aspirin with propylogel he is already loaded with same so we after that we are able to take the guide up and the aspiration catheter also gone up with the micro catheter distal to the clot and this the micro catheter shoot showing the distal vessels so after that we are able to deploy the stent retriever distal to the clot and with the solumbra technique we are able to extract this amount of clot from that patient and this was the post after first pass this the post thrombectomy angiography showing a tk3 recanalization so from coming back we done a right carotid show it also showing a tight stenosis in the origin of internal carotid artery so mm, shall we stand or not leave it left like shoot, that left shoot can you uh, show yes sir no the uh, left uh, left post uh, mechanical thrombectomy neck shoot neck shoot and actually neck shoot or i only have this neck shoots uh, okay 
no how actually we uh, uh, actually it was it is uh, it was completely opened so here was I, the i think okay. the yeah, best best is to observe how, yes sir uh, how it is behaving uh, for okay, some okay 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 sir and we took and, the shoot after that yeah. sorry i didn't include that it's sir So, so uh, okay. if you are, uh, you can uh, one option is or now you have a very good result. So uh, yes, the, the issue is now we are afraid of any distal uh, embolization again after you do such a good procedure. Uh, again, yes, a stroke sir. develops, uh, and the risk and other risk is if you have a large core, and uh, you uh, you have a risk of hemorrhagic transformation. So these yes. are the two uh, risks you are worried about. so yes, uh, you can always uh, see how the patient is uh, if you have not you, you can examine the patient also after the procedure you can do a combing ct in the cath lab also if your cath lab is equipped for the same yes sir and look for any bleed uh, usually when the bleed it will happen usually uh, in the first one two hours or immediately uh, reperfusion you know you can see how the contrast is uh, extravasating and you can understand from that also uh, so in this case without a uh, i would actually in our setup with the uh, cost constraints etc and if the patient you feel the if the stenosis is uh, very well corrected with uh, uh, angioplasty alone frequently uh, and there is no need and uh, get a mri and plan a, a procedure uh, in the next coming days or maybe within one if the patient improved okay sir. if the stenosis is very severe you feel it is going to close you can stent in this particular case i would stent because it is already loaded uh, and yes, uh, it appears like uh, the patient had good collaterals and uh, so uh, the patient wouldn't have mostly a large infarct uh, so uh, stenting will uh, in that on table itself you can do rather than waiting some of the times uh, the patient may not have a good outcome so uh, if the patient is improving in the next 1 to 2 days you can consider for stenting in a as a step procedure as the next step okay sir any so, other questions shall Shall we continue, sir? Hello. Yes, proceed. Okay. Repeat CT was uh, same day. Uh, Express CT was taken. There was no bleed on the after after the procedure. The repeat CT was taken on the next day. This was the repeat CT, and day after that, and this was the last CT. There is uh, one week after the procedure, and. so as a summary so the patient made a very good recovery post procedure you did not show the stent uh, videos stent images yes sir they didn't okay oh, you know that one the dsa run okay okay here on vishal what is your yes. uh, bp management protocol so aggressive bp management with a bp less than 140 bar 80 uh, in post end patient 140 Even bar not on the post end after the thrombectomy after the thrombectomy, thrombectomy also yeah. to me uh, if it is sticky 3 should reduce the bp to less systolic less than 140 yeah. okay so actually he made a very good recovery this a review in opd after 3 weeks we had some uh, word finding difficulty that is a residual weakness we have one more case sir okay this a short case say 47 year old male post cabg presented to our hospital in winter period of 3 hours With a grade zero power left side and gauge deviation to right.
left side is not at all moving. Right is normal. So we done a CT. This was the CT showing hypodensities in the temporal lobe. Then and here is there is the uh, dense MC sign and you undergo a CT angio. This is the MIP image showing the cutoff of the right MCA and there is a poor collaterals also on the right hemisphere. So we immediately was thrombolized with the tenacryplase 14 mg and shifted to neurocath lab immediately. And through the right femoral, we done a NGO. This is the right common carotid artery shoot showing a right M1 occlusion. So this is a lateral view showing only the ACA branches and M1 is totally occluded. So it was an easy case. The guide uh, within uh, 10 15 minutes, we are able to uh, reach the past the clot with the micro catheter, and this is a micro catheter shoot. And we are able to uh, deploy the standard driver after five minutes waiting. We are able to achieve this. And this is the after the first shoot, we can see the both branches of the MCA clearly seen. So, this is the lateral view. But here there is some filling defect was noticed. And the delayed phase of this patient showed a uh, contrastasis in one of the branches with a distilling of flow. So this is a occluded M2 segment of this patient with some uh, perfusion defect here with the M2 segment. So again, we took the microcatheter in the M2 and uh, one more shoot was taken. The occlusion was there. So uh, microcatheter was passed beyond the occlusion and the, this is a microcatheter shoot. And again, we deployed the stent and with the Solimbra technique, we are able to achieve TK3 recanalization. So within 40 minutes of recanalization, So actually this case was uh, shown to um, uh, importance of the late phase of the angiography where we might have missed this occluded M2 segment. That is a, in case of a trifurcation as in this case. So this was the first day, CT, some hemorrhagic transformation was MRI showing some hemorrhagic transformation. And third day we done a repeat CT and fifth day. And he was discharged in this condition after one week. Good. So, sir. What you use the same uh, stent retriever for the M2 also? Uh, here mostly we use the same thing only. Here the phenom 27 easily gone to the M2. This is a large M2 actually. So okay. direct continuation like that from yes. the M1. So. That may be the reason. What was the size of the stent retriever? In the, in this uh, same size, 40. 6 into. 16 to 40. So suppose you want to go distal and you want to use the same. You have you any can choice? 4 into 40. The low no, no. Stand. Suppose you don't have the another solid tear or any ah. driver stent. Okay. Ah. Ah. So can you use in the distal branch like M3, M3 or smaller yeah. branch? I don't know. Sir. <laughs> yeah, you can use. Okay. Ah. There is a way. Yes, sir. So you can partially open this like a half, 
Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So if you open up the six forty half, it is going okay. to act as like a four four three. Okay. Okay. So partially open stent, uh, it is described, and so many literature is available. So you can use the same stent with the yeah. uh, if you are going to distal branches, a partially yes, open stent. Okay. 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 And sir. the second, it was not a salambra technique. Okay, salambra technique, you have to take the aspiration catheter till the end of the clot. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Here second time we did. Use, okay. Yeah. 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 Here yes, you use as an intermediate catheter as a support. Okay. okay. Yes. And definitely, when you are going for the distal artery, when you are okay. uh, pulling back, uh, these smaller arteries don't have the support. So there is a chances of uh, rupture uh, of the artery or dissection of the distal branches. So whenever we are doing the M2, M3, or M4 thrombectomy, always use intermediate catheter, not for the solumbra technique, for the support. Okay. So when you are pulling out, it not have the significant pulling effect on that. Yes. Thank you, sir. Good, good guess. I have one doubt, sir. So what should be the size of the uh, intermediate catheter for uh, for this type of cases? Like That is uh, uh, like at five or like lesser than that or three or something like that. No, you can use intermediate catheter even whatever you are using, like that is okay because you are going to, if you are using the intermediate catheter, you may reach to the terminal IC or M1 segment of MC. So it's okay. Whatever aspiration catheter you have. But okay, suppose, okay. suppose you want to do the stenting, like we have intracranial uh, stenosis also in Indian patients. Okay. So in that situation, because the M6, uh, K6 or yeah, at uh, React 71, they are longer catheter. So if you want to do the angioplasty of uh, intercranial segment, it will be difficult. That balloon is not, the coronary balloon is not going to come out from the this K6 or uh, React. In that situation, you have to use the K5. Okay. I think if everything are anything to add, we can end the meeting. It is, I think it was a good two cases with good results, but a lot of the time in uh, tandem occlusions, the results are not as straightforward most of the time yes, the uh, because of uh, multiple factors so especially with uh, regarding our antithrombotic and all it is uh, very confusing especially in thrombolyzed cases so uh, these are two good cases but sometimes the results may not be as good so uh, anyway good uh, good uh, uh, very done cases thank you everybody uh, uh, who uh, who has started this initiative just I want to know. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, actually, uh, GG, GGs are only started. Okay, it's a GG. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm Dr. Jay Sangar. I, I, I was the fellow last year. So I will be uh, hosting this. Okay, good. Uh, yes, sir. Each time we'll be having some uh, case discussions or any topic related to neuro intervention. And uh, the fellows will be presenting and That's consultants good. will be pairing. Thank you for coming, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you, sir.